Aloha. Welcome to the Condo Insider Show. I'm the new host, Cheryl Franklin. Uh, so bear with me. But today on the show, I have my good friend and mentor, Richard Emery. Um, we're going to be speaking on the subject of effective board meetings. Um, Richard, why don't you take a moment and just introduce yourself as an expert in the industry, which I appreciate. Well, thank you for having me, and congratulations on becoming one of our co-hosts. As you know, Jane Sugimura and I and you are going to be the, the co-hosts. Uh, Condo Insider is sponsored by the Hawaii Council of Community Associations, and we've done over 160 shows trying to help board members and owners alike understand association living. Me personally, I've been in the industry about 25 years, uh, served on the Legislative Action Committee for CAI, the Hawaii Council of Community Associations, co-hosted this show, and just been an advocate in the industry for a very, very long time. Awesome, awesome. So you've been to a few board meetings in your time. I've been bored at a few board meetings here <laughs> this time, but yes, I've been to quite a few board meetings yeah. in, the, in the 25 years. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the importance of having a board meeting and why we have board meetings. Well, first of all, you have to understand that uh, associations are self-governed. So the owners at an annual meeting elect people to represent them to make the decisions for the association. And their powers are defined in the governing documents of the associations. They don't have uh, all the power. In some cases, uh, they have to go to the owners to get permission. But they're elected to represent the people. And the state law says you have to have at least one board meeting a year. But you know, the larger associations or the mid-sized associations pretty much meet quarterly or monthly because they have decisions to make on how to spend the money and what to do. So, a very, very important part of condo living is to have a good board that meets regularly and uh, makes decisions for the association. Yeah, that lends itself to the true meaning of, of the purpose of the board meeting, is to make decisions. Would that's, you agree? That's true. It's absolutely true. And the, the key that I find, because I've been an expert witness in many lawsuits, that, um, that for boards to understand that uh, there's a lot of obligations they have under the statute. Uh, to run an effective board meeting, and uh, if you may, if I don't, if you don't mind me saying, it begins with the notice. Mm -hmm. uh, by law, all the board meetings are open to all of the owners except that portion, which is executive session. And as such, you have to notice all of the owners of the board meeting. And the current law says you put a notice on the project, but uh, many companies now email and have other apps that help additionally tell people the board meeting. And that board meeting is limited to the owners. So a tenant or a guest uh, can't go to the meeting, even the owner's attorney, unless they're invited by the board of directors. And, and there's certain timing requirements with regard to that. Mm. Good, good point to bring up. I've been to a number of board meetings in, in my uh, career as well. And some of them can be quite lengthy. Well, I think that's a problem in the sense that First of all, if you're going to have a board meeting, the statute says that you must give three days notice when practicable, keywords. Mm -hmm. And the when practicable part of it means or upon simultaneous notice of all the directors. So if you had an emergency, uh, you could certainly have the meeting. You know, this is a business meeting. The association has to do business. But you're supposed to give three-day notice. And the law was changed recently. Uh, last year or two, saying not only do you give notice of the meeting, the time and the place, you also have to give notice of the expected agenda. Why do we discuss that night? Yeah, yeah. So, um, what do you think, um, at the end of the day, makes for an effective board meeting? Well, <clears throat> let's remember this. A board meeting is a business meeting. Mm. You talked about these meetings that take hours and hours. Mm -hmm. um, boards really should think that they need to get the meeting done within two hours maximum, in my opinion. Maybe exceptions here or there. But they have to do the meeting within two hours. And as such, the state law says that owners have the right to participate in board meetings. Now, that's not a shouting contest and a debate. 
What I usually recommend for a board is transparency, without the agenda. If something comes up and they have to add something to the agenda or delete it, the law doesn't prohibit that. They just say the expected items on the agenda. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you go to the meeting, what I tell boards traditionally to do, is call the agenda item, painting the building. We've had discussions about painting the building blue or pink. Before we uh, allow owners to participate, we're gonna ask the board members first to have a discussion. Cheryl says pink, Richard says blue, Harold says blue, and you go through that discussion. Then the board president says, before we vote on this, we're gonna allow owners to make a comment. And so the owners make a comment, and you give them two or three minutes, and it's flexible depending on how many people you have there and what's going on, to speak their piece. But at some point you have to say, thank you for your input. Do I have a motion to paint the building? Uh, I make a motion to defer this to the next meeting so we can get more information from the architect. Are there any objections to deferring this item to the next meeting? No, okay, the meeting is the item is deferred. Or Richard says, I move to paint the building blue, and, and we have a vote, and the vote's three to two, no to paint it pink, and then it's recorded in the minutes, because these minutes are a very legal document. You know, should, yeah. there are lawsuits in associations, and it's very critical that an accurate record be kept of what they decided to do. That's a very good point. Um... I've seen a lot of minutes also in my career, and I think it's always important to keep what you just said in mind when writing the minutes. Who's responsible for writing those minutes? Well, that's really a board decision. You know, more times than not, you have an elected secretary, but that's really more of a corporate secretary for signing documents. Most people today, the managing agent, the management company, in their contract, provide that they will write the minutes. What's well, important to remember about the minutes is that it's decisions, it's not discussion. Yeah. So if you and I were having this debate on blue and pink, I think blue is better because it doesn't fade as fast, and you like pink because it's a more emotional color, there's no way a third person can put in the minutes all of the intent of what is being said. Right. So at the end, you should only have, Richard made a motion to paint the building blue, the vote was Richard yes, Cheryl no, and because the law requires you to put in the vote of each director yeah, in, in, in the minutes. Yeah, in my experience and training, it's, it was kind of drilled. Motions and actions, period. Nothing more, nothing less. Um, yeah. Because as you stated, that those minutes can uh, end up becoming part of a legal proceeding. Well, more times they, they do, they don't. And I, I get to ask all the time, should there be minutes of executive sessions? Mm -hmm. And the answer is you can have minutes of executive sessions. Executive sessions don't require the vote of the, of the, of the board member to be um, identified. You certainly have majority voted yes, but don't know. But the problem people don't realize is executive session minutes are discoverable in a lawsuit. Yeah. And, yeah. and so you'd want to be careful exactly what you put in the minutes because hypothetically, if you're having a discussion on a legal issue, should we repair the stairs because they might fall down and kill somebody? You know, and you, you wouldn't want necessarily to have the board voted no because it costs $5,000 right. to not repair the stairs that yeah. might kill somebody and then have the stairs fall and seriously injure or kill somebody. Yeah, yeah. You know, So I'd be very careful when I put it. I, I'm not a big fan of executive session minutes because in theory, you see, to go into executive session, you have to announce from a regular session why you're going in. So let's just say it's to discuss the lawsuit of owner Emory against the association. So then you go to executive session and you have the discussion. Maybe the discussion is, well, Emory, owner Emory wants a million dollars to settle it. Let's offer him $5,000 to settle it, but I'm willing to go as high as 50,000. Would you really want that discoverable? No, right. of course not. Right. You're in this negotiation and your strategy is to offer a low number and then you're saying to the lawyer that we'll give you the authority up to a higher number. So you don't want to necessarily you have executive session minutes come back to hurt you. Mm -hmm. So I'm mm -hmm. a big fan of, uh, of not having minutes in the executive session because if in fact the vote was something more concrete, 
approve the contract with ABC Roofing, the roofing for $1 million, because you've gone through the bids and the comparison and you've decided in executive session you want ABC Roofing. I know I have a lot of roofers out there are gonna be angry, I didn't use them as the example, but that's the, that's the way it goes. Yeah. <laughs> but at the end, they could go back out at the end and say, okay, the board uh, wants to ratify us as soon as executive session, approve the $1 million contract with ABC Roofing to paint the roof or fix the roof. Mm -hmm. um, another question that I have is who actually determines the agenda for the meeting? Well, believe it or not, there's, that's two parts to that question. The truth is the president sets the agenda for the meeting under Robert's rule. He sets the agenda. Now, there are certain meetings like annual meetings and things like that that the order of business is prescribed in the bylaws, and so he would have to follow the bylaws. But for board meetings, typically, uh, the board president sets the agenda, which wouldn't prohibit at the meeting a director from saying, I'd like you to add uh, to the agenda the problem with Unit 114. And the president would say, if there's no objections from the rest of you, we'll add a new business uh, issue with 114. You know, assuming it's not an executive session hearing issue. And so, but it's really the president, and they set the agenda. And because you want to keep it to two hours, uh, there may be items you defer to the next meeting because people get tired after two hours. Yeah, yeah, they really do. I know I've been involved or I've taken over accounts where the agenda was a little bit lengthy. And at that time, it's a good idea to start prioritizing and, and kind of trying to um, reduce that agenda so that you complete the meeting within two hours. I measure a good board meeting at the end of the, it finishes in two hours or yep. less. And there's been no deaths or injuries. Yeah. <laughs> That's very, very true. That's very true. So what's, a, what's the best practice to preparing for a board meeting? What needs to happen before? Um, well, in, in, and, and I would tell you, I wish this happened all the time, but it doesn't. But most management companies, and even if you're self-managed, you're a general manager, Compares what they call a board packet. Mm -hmm. This is the backup information for what we're going to discuss tonight. And that board packet usually goes to the board one week in advance. And in some cases, parts of it, like financials or bids, might have gone earlier. Well, the most important thing that board members should do is read the board packet before they go to the meeting. Yeah. Because you get there and all of a sudden, you're they're opening at the, the packet. Yes, yeah, they're <laughs> opening the packet. And the first item on the agenda, typically, after an owner's forum to kind of let owners come in, see what they want to say, is they don't have to stay through the whole meeting, right. is approval of the minutes. You know, approval of the minutes is really not a motion. It should be the president says, the minutes have been distributed. Are there any corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, the minutes are approved as presented. You know, they don't That's have to have point. a vote on it. It should, be, it should take two minutes. Or it couldn't be... And the minutes distributed, an owner says, yes, uh, they had me voting yes for this, but I voted no, and uh, you misspelled the name of Sally. Okay, are there any other corrections to the minutes? Are there any objections to the minutes as corrected? No, hearing no objection to the minutes as corrected. And you should get out of the minutes in two minutes. Yeah. And if you put in dialogue, like who said, he said, that's when you get into these arguments. Well, that's not exactly what I meant. You yeah. know, and and they, they fight through that. So... Um, uh, you need to have preparation. The board members have read the packet and are prepared to discuss the items and realize that they each should be given a chance to discuss. But if you're not agreeing, you want the building pink and I want it blue, you want to spend an hour with me continuing yeah. to argue with you over yeah. pink and blue where we're not going to change our mind. Yeah. At Good. some point in time, the chair's got to say, okay, everybody's been heard. Let's have a vote. Yeah. I move to defer and talk about some more. I move to paint it pink or blue and move on. But you can, you, you, you continue to talk to somebody is it going to change your mind yeah it's not you know? it's not but this is a good time for a break so we're going to take a one minute break and we'll be right back after the break hi guys i'm your host lillian kumik from lillian's vegan world and i come to you live every second friday from 3 p.m and this is the show where i talk about the plant-based lifestyle and veganism so we go through recipes some upcoming events uh, information about health, regarding your health, and uh, just some ideas on how you can have a better lifestyle, eat healthier, and have fun at the same time. So do join me. I look forward to seeing you, and uh, aloha. 
Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, inviting you to join us on Wednesdays at 1 o'clock for Cannabis Chronicle, the 10,000 year odyssey, where we take a look at cannabis as food, cannabis as medicine, cannabis and religion, and cannabis and dear old Uncle Sam. So please join us to learn all about cannabis. Again, Wednesdays at 1 o'clock. Thank you. Aloha. Welcome back to the show. Um, after the break, we are going to continue our conversation with Richard Emery discussing uh, effective board meetings. Um, before the break, Richard was expounding on the agenda and uh, and and tools and steps to take to try to limit the board meeting to two minutes. Um, why don't we talk a little bit about uh, the responsibilities of the community manager versus the responsibility of the board in facilitating effective board meetings? Okay, and just, and I know it's your first thing, you said two minutes is two hours, the length of the board meeting. Oh, two hours. I would love to have two minute oh, board that's meetings. That's my dream. And because you're new with this, you said break. I, I, first thing I did was check my arms and legs after the break. <laughs> so I make sure that that wasn't what you were talking about, you know, or neck. That yeah. would be worse. But I think that's probably one of the most misunderstood on, uh, issues of the management agent, the managing agent. I keep calling it management company yeah. and the board itself. And let me explain it to you this way. That the board is the responsible entity for the association. There's no way to get around it. They can't delegate the duties to a committee or the responsibilities. They have director and officer liability insurance to protect them. And the managing agent, I look at it like your body. Your body is the association. And the brain and the head is the board. The arm that goes out and does things because the brain tells it to, is the managing agent. That's a the, great analogy. Yeah, the managing agent has no independent authority unless expressly provided for in the governing documents or expressly provided by a motion by the, by, the, by the board. We approve you to go sign the contract and do A, B, C, and D. The managing agent is, is an agent for the, for the board of directors. And you'll find in most management companies, uh, contracts, that we have an indemnity and a hold harmless provision for our action. Because how can we be, uh, have an action of being held responsible if the board's instructed us to do it? Right. So uh, uh, the managing agent prepares the minutes and prepares the board packet typically, attends, and if an issue comes up on parliamentary procedure or the governing documents or common practice, standards of care in the industry, best practices, they will provide their input for consideration by the board who will make right. the final decision. It's not the managing agent, and I can tell you from experience, some managing agents are more forceful about it than others. But in the end, it doesn't make a difference whether I'm forceful or not. It's going to be on the board's kuleana at the end to make the decision and take responsibility for it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. In terms of the order of the agenda and the meeting and how the meeting should be handled, are there any uh, rules or standards that, that all association board meetings should follow? Well, you know, under state law, we're all obligated to follow Robert's Rules of Order. It certainly comes into play much greater in an annual meeting or a special owner's meeting. Uh, Robert's Rules provides for a section on conduct of a small board, less than 12 members, mm. which is almost all the condo boards. And in those cases, um, the board operates under relaxed rules. So you don't have to have the motions prepared in advance. Factually speaking, you don't have to have a second on any motion. Factually speaking, the president can vote on a small board. You know, but Robert's Rules also defers to, I'm going to call it the practice of the organization. So if your association, the practice is to have a second on motions, it's not a big deal. It's really the standard. It's not violating Robert's Rules. You know, it's a... Uh, the standards, just like you may have a more expanded set of minutes. If that's your practice, that's okay. It's just not recommended. It's not what Robert Schwartz says. So, yeah. But the order of business is determined by the president when he does the agenda. You don't have to do the minutes first, the financial statement second. 
You know, you don't have old business or unfinished business, the right way to call it, new business. You don't, you don't have to do it in that order. Because yeah. the big thing I see is you get real structured, you know, in one of these yep. things. And all of a sudden you have a guest, like a lawyer or an architect, who's charging you $300 an hour to be there. If there's no objections, we're going to take the attorney first yeah. and let him come in and go in respect for his time. Yeah. Yeah. Saving you money, saving him anguish of sitting there all night long. Kind of impolite, doesn't have much aloha spirit to it. Yeah. And so there's a lot of flexibility in it, but the order of business is determined by the president. He's got flexibility uh, uh, subject to the assembly, in this case, the board of directors. As it should be clear we're talking about board meetings, not annual meetings and everything I'm saying. Yeah. In what instances do you think you would need a parliamentarian at a meeting? Well, I see them at board meetings, and I, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, uh, I see them at annual meetings. It's more prevalent at annual meetings because there's some issue where the owners want to amend the bylaws or removal of the board mm. or, or some bigger issue. In board meetings, I see it um, more times than not because the chair doesn't have confidence in writing the meeting. Right. And yeah. he wants somebody else to do it, and yeah. he's maybe a shy person, yeah. and they, they, they want someone else to run the meeting uh, because they're, not, they're, they're afraid they have some duty they don't know, like a Robert's Rules, right. and, and so more times than not. But I have seen issues where a board member was going to try to push an agenda item, and, and the chair maybe didn't want to do it, and, and uh, you know, there's, uh, you know the, the chair can certainly... Um, say things like, well, I'm going to defer that till the next meeting. And then the other person will say, I object, and you have to have a vote. And so sometimes you get into little complicated yeah. issues that because of the um, personal emotions and mm -hmm. the agendas of the board factions, you know, uh, I would have to tell you that I don't see that many boards that totally that have board factions. They have differences on views. I don't ever see it to get to the level of angst that causes a parliamentarian, but it's an available resource. And the good thing about it is, if it has to go to court later, you've protected the yeah. record with respect to, uh, to that aspect. Yeah, yeah. Good point, good point. Have you seen instances where the property manager will chair the meeting? Yes. Probably that lends itself to what you were just <clears throat> speaking to. You have a president that. Well, I've chaired many meetings, both annual and uh, board meetings, uh, that got into. Uh, a bunch of issues and steps regarding a loan, construction, litigation, mm. things along that line that they needed to get the board to approve before it went to the owners. And, <clears throat> and because of the nature of the, uh, of the board, they felt a neutral person would be better. And, and uh, so I've chaired many board meetings. But the reality of it is a good property manager, and I would encourage all of the property managers to... Uh, join the uh, National Association of Parliamentarians and yeah. at least get the basic certification of passing the admittance test because it'll save them quite a bit of trouble, you know. Yeah. Earlier we spoke about um, owner participation at meetings. I know early on in my tenure in this industry, that wasn't all the, always the case that they could participate. And I find that once the law changed to allow owner participation, the meetings started going a little bit longer. Well, I think that's true. But, you know, the owners are the owners. They right. really are the board's boss. I think we should be transparent and have respect for Absolutely. them without letting them hijack the meeting and without letting them become negative and bitter towards the board member and, and how they're conducting, running the association. That's the fine line. And if owners want to make comments, make suggestions, realizing the board can say, we don't agree with your suggestion, and they want to participate, and you have transparency on the decision-making, again, outside of certain limited areas in executive session, I think that's all very, very healthy uh, for the owners. So. But I see so many boards still try to minimize owner participation uh, yeah. when the law clearly says that they have the right to participate on every agenda item, which means it's not just the form in the beginning and the end. It says you bring up a single item on the agenda, they have a right to make a few comments. Yeah, no, I agree. I think old habits are hard to break. There was a time when board members limited owner participation to two minutes, and that was usually during an owner's forum. 
And once the law changed, I don't know if the word was slowly getting out, but I agree that transparency um, is beneficial on both ends and homeowners tend to appreciate that. Yeah, and I see the biggest problem today, I shouldn't say one of the biggest problems is probably a better way to describe it, is that we're still having trouble getting people to understand that on the notice of the meeting, they have to put the expected agenda. Right. And people make mistakes. And I think owners who have some particular angst against their board and looking for every microscopic thing they didn't do in, they got to realize they're all volunteers and they got to work together collaboratively because in some ways I call it form over substance. Mm. You know, if they forgot to put the expected agenda on the meeting, okay, that's wrong. They should do it. Does it violate the fact they can't have a meeting? No. Right. Is it going to make all the decisions made wrong, uh, in, avoidable? No. If you, have a, if you have a quorum for the board there and they vote and they do things, the courts have lent uh, the decisions towards that. But I certainly would advocate for boards to follow the law, do the proper notices, put the expected agenda, let people participate reasonably in the meeting. Reasonably, yeah. And uh, I find, frankly, the meetings go longer, not so much from owners, but boards fighting among themselves what mm. to do. Mm. Yeah. And whose responsibility do you think it is to kind of um, rein that in, if you will? Well, it's the chair. It's the president. Yeah, it's, it's the, the chair of the meeting. It's his meeting. He's the, he's the chair of the meeting. Yeah. And uh, certainly having the property manager sitting next to him, the agent, and saying, you know, uh, I recommend you bring this to a vote, or yeah. I recommend we either defer or move on. Kind of remind him we're losing track of time, and a good president will hear what he has to say and say something to the effect, okay, we've discussed this now for 20 minutes. Uh, I'm going to take two more minutes, and then we're going to move on. If I don't have a motion, we'll move on. If we have a motion, we'll vote. We, 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 you, you can go on for days. I actually went to an annual meeting once that took three days. Cost seventy five thousand dollars. That's different. possible. Yes, it, it, you just adjourned it. You closed down at nine thirty at night and adjourned it till the next morning. And they had experts and lawyers there, all fighting over a proposed repair to the building. And they had these factions because the cost between the two competing repairs was millions of dollars of difference. So uh, you had this faction and fighting. Yeah. And it went for three days. Well, you know, I don't particularly like that because. Yeah, that's pretty you brutal. Know, yeah, but we still had no deaths or injuries. So <laughs> that's one good thing. Well, that's always good when you have no deaths or injuries. But a lot of good stuff, Richard. I mean, uh, you've had a lot of experience in this industry. I've seen a lot, I've experienced a lot. It's always different. But I think the key is. Um, everything you kind of discussed, just kind of sticking to an agenda, making sure you make decisions, moving on, being transparent, allowing the uh, homeowners to weigh in. They appreciate that. And that can lend itself to a win-win. You got it. Yeah. So thank you again for joining the show. I appreciate you as my friend and mentor. Always. Uh, wish me luck going forward. Going forward. <laughs> we'll be right here with you. Yeah. That's it. Thank you.